The Age of Enlightenment was a philosophical movement of the 18th century that emphasized the use of reason to evaluate previously accepted ideas. It brought about many humanitarian reforms. The quote-unquote Enlightenment was not a single movement or school of thought. For these philosophies, or the philosophies of the Enlightenment, were often contradictory or divergent. The Enlightenment was less a set of ideas than it was a set of values. At its core was a critical questioning of traditional institutions, customs, and morals and a strong belief in rationality and science. Thus, there was still a considerable degree of similarity between competing philosophies. Even though um, the philosophies perhaps reached different conclusions, they started from the same place. Some historians include the late 17th century, which is typically known as the Age of Reason or Age of Rationalism, as part of the Enlightenment. However, most historians consider the Age of Reason to be a prelude to the ideas of the Enlightenment. Modernity, by contrast, is used to refer to the period after the Enlightenment. And usually when we're talking about the modern era, we're talking about social conditions more than uh, a philosophical movement. The Enlightenment refers to a philosophical movement more than it does a specific time period. Uh, for the purposes of instruction on this timeline, you can see that the Enlightenment roughly extends from six, the 1680s to about the time of Napoleon, which is circa 1800. It is important for us to recognize that preceding the Age of Enlightenment was the Age of Reason. In fact, the Enlightenment was born out of the Age of Reason, which had its roots in maths and sciences. During the Age of, Re of pardon me, during the Age of Reason, some European mathematicians and scientists struggled to accept the scientific explanations the Church provi provided for what happened in nature. Looking to understand the natural world, scientists turned away from the answers provided by the Roman Catholic Church and relied on their own observations and data. For example, the Roman Catholic Church had accepted and endorsed the opinion that the Earth was the center of the universe and that the universe orbited around the Earth. This theory is called geocentrism, and it is shown in the top left image. You can see the Earth in the middle and then the moon in white, and then uh, going out the other planets uh, and then the sun is the large yellow uh, dot about halfway out, the, out along the rings. Galileo, who lived during the Age of Reason, used a telescope to study the planets and stars. Based on his observations, he argued that the sun was at the center of our solar system and that the planets orbited the sun. This theory is called heliocentrism, and you can see it in the bottom right-hand corner of this slide. You can only imagine uh, what the church's reaction was when Galileo started promoting this heliocentric view. They were very upset with him and would eventually actually place him under house arrest for the rest of his life. In the Age of Enlightenment, philosophers began to think that if a scientific method could be used to discover truths like it was in the Age of Reason, then perhaps there could be an intellectual version of the scientific method that could be used to discover philosophical truths. They called this method reason. Thinkers in the Enlightenment viewed the present with hope. The Golden Age was not simply in the past, but would appear again in the future. The Enlightenment was secure in its feelings that with the application of reason, and only reason, things were going to get better. The Enlightenment was an age of optimism tempered by the realistic recognition of the sad state of the human condition. We spoke about um, 
the situation in Europe uh, just about the age of discovery um, and the uh, at the beginning of this course. Progress was a key note for the Enlightenment age and new values which stressed freedom, rights, and equality, those three things sound familiar to us in American history, were emphasized. But it's important to know or to remember that freedom, rights, and equality ran counter to what governments believed at this time. Here are a few big names in Enlightenment thinking. First is René Descartes. He had enormous influence on the development of what is called rationalism. He also had an influence on deduction and modern science. Descartes was a, was a mathematician and he stressed the importance of using the mathematical method as a means of obtaining knowledge that was precise and verifiable. His work inspired scientists to believe that nature was an orderly system which could be understood by human beings. And his famous expression, I think, therefore I am. Isaac Newton was a scientist. He synthesized the laws of physics both on Earth and in space way back in 1647. Oh, I think that's 1674. Otherwise, he would have been five years old, which is an amazing feat. He identified the effects of gravity on objects and came up with his famous three laws of motion, which you can see at the bottom. Newton was a thinker who was seen to have given final proof of an orderly universe governed by laws that were unchangeable. And you'll see the quote there in the middle, or the quotation rather, if I have seen further than others, it is by standing up on the shoulders of giants. And that is a great uh, way to remember that the Enlightenment built on the age of reason. Moving away from science and math and moving to philosophers, Thomas Hobbes was an English philosopher and he was a champion of absolutism for the sovereign, but he also developed some of the fundamentals of European liberal thought. Important to him were the rights of the individual, the natural equality of all men, and the artificial character of the political order. He also believed that all legitimate political power must be representative and based on the consent of the people. Hobbes also believed that humans were naturally bad. Uh, he's not a very optimistic guy, uh, but he lived in a very violent time. Because people were bad, Hobbes said, if they didn't have government, they would ultimately destroy each other. Therefore, humans need, or uh, Hobbes believed, that the best form of government was an absolute monarchy that could control people's behavior so they didn't get into trouble. On the opposite end of the spectrum, we have a guy named John Locke was not just a character on Lost. John Locke was another English philosopher, and while he agreed with Hobbes about the rights of the individual, the natural equality of all men, and most importantly, that a government's power was given by the consent of the people, he most wholeheartedly disagreed with Hobbes's conclusion. Locke did not think that absolutism was the way to go. Instead, he believed that there was a two-way contract between the government and the people. This meant that the people could dissolve the contract at any point if they believed that the government wasn't protecting them or protecting their interests. Uh, Johnny Boy believed that human beings were naturally good and therefore they could be trusted to form and dissolve governments as they required. This difference between Hobbes and Locke um, becomes even more uh, applicable and relevant when we discuss the differences between Alexander Hamilton and Thomas Jefferson. I hope that 
this has given you a nice background about the Enlightenment. It isn't the whole story, but it's just a sampling. And hopefully you can determine what the Enlightenment's influence may have been on the thinking and reasoning behind the American Revolution. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask, and I will post a copy of this script on the website as well. Thank you.